deal with the curriculum issues uh, that we're all facing for our sixth forms coming from 2015. It's a mess. It needs some decisive direction and it needs some shape. And I'm very grateful, therefore, to Peter, without further ado, to present to you on where we've come from and where we might be going. Peter, thank you very much. Okay, well, um, this one is going to be very different to Now, this is what we're being faced with. All would agree these reforms have been hurried. Uh, wouldn't it have been so much better if there had been a big bang, as it were, in 2018 or 2019, and all the subjects were introduced at the same time? That, however, is not going to happen. We would be extremely keen to mitigate any effects on candidates across all sectors, actually, uh, as far as higher uh, education entrance is concerned, in but two to three years' time. Um, and our voice, actually, is one that matters, and it's very important uh, that we are listened to. That's why we're keen to share these ideas with as wide a public as possible. But the key about this is how are we going to make it work? Um, and it's got to be in the best interest, most importantly, of the pupils and the staff. And I can give you a prediction now that there will be multiple solutions to this conundrum, uh, and it will depend very much on your localities. This, this actually was a very important session. It's to do with the curriculum changes that are being introduced uh, from 2015 right the way through to 2017. We've been helping uh, heads to think about the challenges with exam reform. In particular, students are going to be uh, sitting exams at the end of their two-year sixth form course uh, from the summer of 2017, and there's an awful lot of work to do to get ready for that. Um, so let's have a bit of revision. There's only one thing that we've really been bothered with, and that's whether or not the public examination system is fair. Um, we have to come back to that again and again and again. We just want the thing to be transparent and for justice to be done. Ofqual, slow progress. Um, that's what we're faced with at the moment. These things are not yet fixed. And I just want you to keep those in your minds as we move through and worry about new specifications. Um, they're still unresolved. Uh, a number of them are promises, um, and we'll see whether or not they do come to fruition. Uh, the one area where we've had some considerable success, I do hope, is modern foreign languages. One thing is clear, and it's that opening statement, over the next three to four years, it's going to be a bit of a bumpy ride, not just for us, for everybody in the education sector um, out there. And that is just something we need to face up to. Um, not only have we got to choose a low six curriculum model without necessarily all the information we would wish for, um, but there are also going to be all sorts of implications for staff development with the approach of linearity. This concerns me more in a funny way, but what are the pupils going to think? Um, uh, they're going to have a very complex portfolio of qualifications. What are parents going to think? What are governors going to think? What are employers going to think as they try and work their way uh, through what's going to be a mosaic of, uh, of, of qualifications? Um, and I think uh, the point there is that our own messaging is going to have to be quite clear. It's very important that we take the lead in this and guide them through the whole thing. All schools have got to start thinking about new sixth form models. They've got to start thinking about how they're going to manage old style modular A-levels, which will run parallel to new style linear A-levels, and they need to think about whether or not they are going to use the option which they will have to offer three linear A-levels, and that means no examination or public exam at the end of the lower six, or, or indeed they're going to stick with new style AS levels and straight on to a mix of reformed and unreformed A-levels. It's a very, very complex scenario, and there is going to be a multiplicity of responses to it. Um, I think they probably break down into about two or three simple models. This is the smorgasbord. This is what's on offer. Um, and I apologise to those who are IB schools because you may not think this is particularly relevant to you. But that's the choice you've got. Um, uh, and there's a whole host of things that can connect or not connect. And forget not, of course, uh, that we worry today about the lower six. Uh, there is also uh, the GCSE reforms coming along swiftly after that. Um, so that's the whole series of choices. None of that is new. Um, and um, I think the time has probably come to start gazing into the crystal ball. But uh, we, above all, have got to be very pragmatic about things. Are we going to go 
for a mixed economy to an extent we'll have to at the very beginning, um, or are we going to be going for a linear economy? I think the most important thing as well is what is good for one school may not be good for another school um, in the sense that it depends very much on the candidate profile of your pupils um, and, and the area with which you are and indeed what the maintained sector may well be doing around you. Um, so this really is a, is a, is a think piece uh, which people should be able to take away um, and uh, spark quite a lot of lively discussion I think um, in their senior management teams and with heads of department. This is not rocket science. Uh, um, there are some suggestions there. Um, for examine AS levels and watch out for reformed and the unreformed, or you can go linear, um, or indeed you might take the opportunity to go back to three A levels and do all sorts of other interesting stuff um, in another block. Um, and interesting uh, it will be. We don't need to get into a lava about this. In fact, it's actually quite simple. Um, and in fact, you can be quite confident once we've chosen the model that suits our school that we will still be able to deliver. Uh, the, the quality of education and teaching that we always have done. After all, it is only another assessment system. So I think we, we can be punchy, uh, we can accept that there will be a range of models and diversity, um, and of course we can tell parents that they can be assured of outcomes because our children are not really going to change. It's the same cohort after the same cohort, and for most of us, the same teachers after the same teachers, teaching the very best French they can, the very best maths they can, the very best physics they can. And that will, I believe, shine through in the end. So the first little section was from right now until about January. What are the kind of initial concerns that you might crystallise in a common room discussion about the way ahead and what's coming around the corner? First one, the specifications are going to be coming out slowly. They're not, you can go onto the Ofcore website and see the specifications that have been approved in each subject. There's still only a minority, but we made the point that one of the first points is, are the specifications actually clear in terms of then leading to staff and curriculum planning? It is going to be quite confusing with staff through those three waves of change, first teaching 15, 16 and 17. So some of the questions I've posed in these slides will only apply to start with for some subjects and not for others, where there's still modular work going on. And so that will then need to be understood well by the senior management team when assessing whether each department is on the top of its game in relation to preparing for the act.